pleated electric vehicle, the batteries, electrically isolated from the chassis, are contained in a T-shaped metal tray. This tray can be unbolted and lowered from the car to gain access to the batteries. This design was chosen as the best solution, offering lightweight, crashworthiness, and minimal impact on passenger seating comfort. I've shown the spare tire there. But you see where that spare tire goes well forward to the battery pack? How do you feel about that with a five mile hour barrier folding? I don't, what's the dimension of it? The front of the car crushes. For a 30 mile an hour impact, approximately 30 inches. At the outset, Chrysler Corporation's research office was selected to play a major role in the design of the vehicle. Working with the prime contractor, Chrysler was responsible for vehicle engineering, fabrication and assembly, production costing, and vehicle testing. From the beginning, ETV-1 was designed to meet federal motor vehicle safety standards. Computer programs were used to predict and simulate crashworthiness. The designers also realized the body must be as light as possible, incorporating extensive use of light alloys and have excellent aerodynamic characteristics. Air drag and excess weight can ruin the performance of an electric car. When a satisfactory basic body style had been identified, 3 8 scale models were tested in a wind tunnel, and the design was modified to reduce its wind resistance under normal driving conditions. At last, the car took its final shape. At the same time, engineers were asking the question, can we build an electric subcompact that will ride and handle well, even though it weighs 50% more than the same sized conventional car? To find the answer, the engineers constructed a mule car. Based on the chassis of a conventional subcompact, this gasoline-powered automobile was ballasted to duplicate the weight of ETV-1. A battery tray that simulated the battery compartment of the final electric vehicle was bolted into place. The suspension was redesigned with new geometry and stiffer springs to control a car that would weigh 3,920 pounds when loaded with four passengers. car was put through its paces on a test track to check its handling in panic avoidance situations as well as in ordinary traffic. The response and predictability of the mule car assured the engineers that the completed ETV-1 would handle as well as a conventional automobile. After track testing of the mule car's ride, handling, and braking, it was modified to duplicate exactly the structural properties of the electric vehicle. Then, it was crashed. Engineers ran the mule car into a concrete barrier at 30 miles per hour. The results verified that the electric vehicle would meet federal motor vehicle safety standards for frontal impact. The body for ETV-1 was fabricated at Modern Engineering Services Incorporated in Detroit. Body forms were built up in wood. Next, cast in plaster. And then molded in sand to create the forms for stamping the sheet metal. On a gridded assembly platform, body pieces were carefully positioned and welded into place. Sheets of Lexan plastic were thermoformed to create the side and rear windows. Finally, the electric vehicle was completed. At the proving grounds, the testing program began. To the driver, the controls of the electric vehicle look feel and operate like those of a conventional automobile. The microcomputer, located behind the instrument panel, 
receives inputs from a variety of locations throughout the car. Including the brake and accelerator pedals, the drive, neutral, and reverse control, a safety interlock in the driver's seat, and the batteries. But when the driver punches drive and steps on the accelerator, he is aware only of the motion of the car and the humming of the power conditioning unit. The track tests confirmed that the car had met its basic design goals. Zero to 30 miles per hour in nine seconds. Top speed, 65 miles per hour. It can climb a mile long, 5% grade at a constant 50 miles per hour. Handling is good and the feel is crisp and positive. During the Society of Automotive Engineers Urban Driving Cycle, a standard test for stop and go driving, ETV1 will cover about 70 miles before it needs to be recharged. Back at the garage, the car was connected to a battery charger for overnight recharge, as it would be at home. And engineers check the motor, drive system, and the safety interlock that disconnects the electrical system when the hood is raised. Continued tests at the proving grounds reveal that a typical driver and one passenger can obtain a range of 100 miles at a constant 45 miles per hour. They have also found that ETV1 is quiet, comfortable, and pleasant. What we have to recognize here is a compromise between the style appearance of the vehicle and the need for a low slip factor for aerodynamic purposes. Do we have to remove that from the, from the vehicle to test it or can we... The quest to develop a practical electric car is one of the most challenging problems facing the nation's scientists and engineers. The Department of Energy's near-term electric vehicle program has spurred the search for a solution. And ETV-1, equipped with tomorrow's technology, has passed an important milestone on the road to this goal. The program is one of many steps being taken by the Department of Energy to stimulate the ultimate large-scale commercialization of electric vehicles and thereby reduce U.S. dependence on petroleum.